In this video, we'll learn how Mongoose, a library from MongoDB, can help you to structure and access your data with ease. Many who learn MongoDB get introduced to it through a very popular library, Mongoose. What is Mongoose? It was described as elegant MongoDB object modeling for Node.js. It's an ODM or object data modeling library for MongoDB. With Mongoose, data modeling, schema enforcement, model validation, and general data manipulation becomes effortless. And if you want to hear from the maintainer of Mongoose, Val Karpov, we had him on the MongoDB podcast. The episode link is in the description below. Now, why Mongoose? By default, MongoDB has a flexible data model, so flexible that anything goes. This makes MongoDB databases very easy to alter and update in the future but a lot of developers are used to having more rigid schemas. Now, while everything that Mongoose does can also be accomplished by using the MongoDB driver for Node.js, Mongoose abstracts some of the features of the MongoDB drivers and wraps them up in a nice bow. Mongoose forces a semi-rigid schema from the beginning. With Mongoose, we have to define a schema and a model. So what's a schema? A schema defines the structure of your collection documents. A Mongoose schema maps directly to a MongoDB collection, Here's an example of a schema. Now with schemas, we define each field and its data type. Permitted types are string, number, date, buffer, boolean, mixed, object ID, array, decimal 128, and map. Now that we know what a schema is, what is a model? Well, models take your schema and apply it to each document in its collection. Models are responsible for all of the document interactions like creating, reading, updating, and deleting, or CRUD. And it's important to note that the first argument passed to the model should be the singular form of your collection name. Mongoose automatically changes this to the plural form, transforms it to lowercase, and uses that for the database collection name. So in this example, the uppercase blog string translates to the lowercase blogs collection in MongoDB. Then we also pass our blog schema schema object. Let's set up our environment. I'm going to assume that you have Node.js installed and VS Code. If you don't have those, then go to nodejs.org and code.visualstudio.com to download and install the versions appropriate for your operating system. So now in VS Code, let's open up our terminal and we're going to type npm init y. That's going to initialize our project and accept all of the defaults. Next, we'll install Mongoose. We'll also install Nodemon as a dev dependency. Now let's go into our package JSON and we're going to edit this script. We have a test script. Let's change this to dev. And we're going to have this start our index.js file using Nodemon. Nodemon will monitor our project, and after every save, it will automatically restart it for us. Now, after this, we're also going to add a type of module. This is going to allow us to use ES modules instead of common JS. This is also going to allow us to use top level await. So let's save that and close it. And now we'll need to create our index.js file. We'll first import Mongoose from Mongoose and then we'll connect with Mongoose. Now we'll need to give Mongoose a connection string. You could connect to a local MongoDB instance, but we're going to use MongoDB Atlas. If you don't already have an account, go ahead and sign up for a free MongoDB Atlas cluster. There's a link in the description below. And if you don't already have a cluster set up, go check out my intro to Atlas video to get your cluster created and set up. Once you have your cluster set up, you can get your connection string from the MongoDB Atlas dashboard. Right here next to our cluster, we'll click connect, and then we'll click connect your application. And this is our connection string. Let's copy this. Now back in VS Code, in our index.js file, we'll paste this connection string. Notice here that it's already added my user and I'll just need to enter my password, which I created during the cluster setup. My password is super secret, it's Mongo. Of course, after this video, I'll remove this user. So this connection string is not gonna work for you. Now the connection string will also reference the my first database database. You can change this to whatever you'd like to call your database. I'm just going to leave it. Now, before we do anything with our connection, we'll need to create a schema and model. Ideally, you'll create a schema slash model file for each schema that is needed. So we're gonna create a new folder slash file structure. So let's create that here. We're gonna create a model folder and then a blog.js file within that. First, let's import Mongoose from Mongoose. And then let's destructure the schema and the model from Mongoose. Next, we'll define our blog schema by creating a new Mongoose schema. And then we can define all of the fields that our documents should have. So first we'll have a title, and this is gonna be of type string. 
We'll also have a slug, which will be of type string. We'll have a published of Boolean. Author will be of type string. Content of type string. Then we'll have tags, which is going to be an array of strings. So we define an array with square brackets, and then the contents of the array could be anything, but for this instance, we're going to use strings. We'll also have a created at and an updated at, which are dates. And then we'll add comments, which is going to be an array of objects. Within each object, we'll have a user, content, and votes. The user and content will be strings and the votes a number. Lastly, we'll define our blog model, and we'll use the mongoose model and pass it to arguments. The first is our collection. Remember, for this, Mongoose automatically uses the plural lowercase version as our collection name. So this is going to become the lowercase blogs collection in our MongoDB database. And for the second argument, we pass our blog schema object. And then let's export default our blog. Let's save this. So now that we have our first model and schema set up, we can start inserting data into our database. So back in the index.js file, let's insert a new blog article. So first we need to import our blog model that we just created. And then we'll create a new blog object called article, which will define the data that we want to save. So within this, we'll have our object, which contains all of the data that we want to save. And then we'll insert this article into our MongoDB database by using the save mongoose method. Let's add a bit more after that to log what is currently in the database. For this, we're going to use the find one method. So for our first article, we're going to await blog.find1, we're going to pass an empty object, which is going to find everything, and find1 is going to return the first thing that it finds. So we're going to then console log first article. So let's run the code. So be sure to save this, and then let's open our terminal, and we're going to run npm run dev. Remember, we created this dev script. And I received an error because blog did not specify the .js, so I added .js, saved it, and now we have our new document logged. Now, because we're using NodeMon in this project, every time we save the file, the code is going to run again. So if you want to insert a bunch of articles, just keep saving. So let's go back to our MongoDB Atlas dashboard and see what we have. So we'll go here to Browse Collections. Now we'll see that we have a My First Database database that was created and also a Blogs Collection. Now within the Blogs Collection, we can see this document that we just inserted. In the previous example, we used the Save Mongoose method to insert a document into our database. This requires two actions. First, we have to instantiate the object, and then we save it. Now, alternatively, we can do this in one action using the mongoose create method. So instead of creating a new blog, let's say await blog.create. We'll still pass our object in, and then we don't need to save it, and we don't need to find again. Let's just console log our article. Let's open up our console, and then let's save this, and we'll see that it's going to rerun. And we're going to get a new post. And this time we have a new object ID as well. So if we go back to our dashboard and we refresh, we should see this new document. And there it is. So this method is much better. Not only can we insert our document, but we also get returned the document along with its ID. A mongoose makes updating data very convenient too. Expanding on this previous example, let's change the title after it's been created. So we're going to create another article exactly the same, but now let's take our article and let's take the title and we're going to make that equal to something else. So let's say the most awesomest post. Now because we made a change to it, we're going to need to save it. So we're going to say await article.save and then we'll console log our article. So let's open up our console so that we can see the log. And then let's save the file. And now we can see the most awesomest post. And we have a new object ID. And if we go back into our dashboard and refresh, we'll see this third document. And it's the most awesomest post. It doesn't get much easier than that. But this may not be what we intended to do. So let's make sure that we're updating the correct document. We're going to use a special mongoose method, find by ID. And this is going to get our document by its object ID. So let's copy this object ID of the last one that we created. And we don't want to create a new document. We're going to say that article is going to await blog.findById. And then we have our object ID. Then we're going to call the exec function or execute. 
The exec mongoose function is technically optional and it returns a promise. In my experience, it's better to use this function since it will prevent some head scratching issues. If you want to read more about it, I'll include a link to the mongoose docs that talks more about this and promises. So let's open up our terminal again and save the file. So now we found our most awesomest post by our object ID. Now there are many other query options in Mongoose too. You can check out the full list in the Mongoose docs. Now just like with the standard MongoDB Node.js drivers, we can project only the fields that we need. So let's only get the title, slug, and content fields. So we can do that in our find by ID. So first we're passing our object ID. And then after that, we can have an optional second parameter. This second parameter could be an object, a string, or an array of strings. So we're just going to use a string and we're going to say we want the title, the slug, and the content. Let's open up our terminal and save this again. It's going to rerun. And now we have our title, our slug, and our content. And it's always going to also provide us with our ID unless we specifically tell it not to. Now, just like in the standard MongoDB Node.js driver, we have the delete one and delete many methods in Mongoose. So here we're going to await delete one and we're going to search for the title of awesome post. Delete one is going to delete the first document that it finds that matches our query. So then we're going to log blog and let's see what that does. So let's open up our terminal and save our file. And we see acknowledge true deleted count one. So it succeeded and deleted the first document that it found. Alternatively, we also have delete many, which will delete every document that it finds that matches our query. So if we save this, we see that it found one more and it deleted it. And notice that the documents that we've inserted so far have not contained an author, dates, or comments. So far, we have defined what the structure of our document should look like, but we have not defined which fields are actually required. At this point, any field could be omitted. So let's set some required fields in our blog.js schema. So right here, title string is the exact same thing as changing this into an object and saying that our type is string. So by turning this into an object, we can then pass more parameters. So let's also say required is true. So now the title is required. Let's do the same thing for our slug. We're going to have it be required, but we're also going to say lowercase is going to be true. A slug should always be in lowercase. And so we want to make sure that in case some uppercase characters are passed, we're going to automatically set those to lowercase. Now for published, the type is Boolean, but we're not going to say it's required. Instead, we're going to say that the default is false. So if published is not included, it will automatically be added and set to false. We'll also set the author to required. We'll leave the content and tags just like they are. But for created, we're going to set a default for the created as well. And we're going to use an arrow function here because we want this to run every time a document is inserted. So that is going to set this to the current date and time. And we also want this to be immutable. We don't want it to ever be changed. So the date will be added when the document is inserted and it can never be updated after that. And we'll leave updated at and comments just as they are for now and we'll move on. So let's save this and then we're going to go back into our index.js and let's insert another document. This time we'll need to include all of the required fields. So it will include a title, a slug, an author, content and tags. Let's open up our terminal and save the file. Now notice here that we have a created at field added for us. I omitted the published field, but now in our document, we have published false. That's because we set this as default in our schema. And the slug is in lowercase, even though I passed in some uppercase characters in the document object. Mongoose uses many standard MongoDB methods, plus introduces many extra helper methods that are abstracted from regular MongoDB methods. Next, we're going to go over just a few of those. The exists method returns either null or the object ID of a document that matches the provided query. So in here, we're going to say blog.exists and we're going to look for the author of Jesse Hall. And then we'll console log blog. Let's save this. So now we can see that it was found and we're given the object ID. Mongoose also has its own style of querying data. The where method allows us to chain and build queries. So instead of using this standard find method, so we have blog.find1. We're looking for the author of Jesse Hall. Let's save this and we can see that we are returned that article. Instead of using the standard method, we could use the equivalent where method. So here we're going to say await blog.where author dot equals Jesse Hall. And let's console log blog where and we'll save this and we'll see that we're returned that same article. 
So either of these methods work. Use whichever seems more natural to you. You can also chain multiple where methods to include even the most complicated query. Now to include projection when using the where method, chain the select method after your query. So after our query, let's say select, and then we're gonna select our title and our author only. Let's save that. And now we can see that we're returned only our title and author along with the object ID. Now it's important to understand your options when modeling data. If you are coming from a relational database background, you're gonna be used to having separate tables for all of your related data. But generally in MongoDB, data that is accessed together should be stored together. So you should plan this out ahead of time if possible. Nest data within the same schema when it makes sense. But if you have the need for a separate schema, Mongoose makes it a breeze. So let's create another schema so that we can see how multiple schemas can be used together. We'll create a new file in our model directory and we'll call this user.js. First, we're going to import Mongoose from Mongoose, and then we're going to destructure our schema and model from Mongoose, and then we'll create a new user schema, and then we're gonna pass in our fields. So first, we're going to have a name, and this is gonna be of type string, and it will be required. We're also going to have an email. This is gonna be of type string. We're also going to have a min length. So this is another Mongoose property that we can include, so we're gonna set the minimum length to 10. That sounds reasonable for an email address. We're gonna set it to required and email addresses should be in lowercase, so we'll set that to true. Next, we'll create our user model. We'll pass in our model name and our user schema, and then we'll export that as default. So let's save that. And now we need to reference this user model in our blog schema for the author and comments user. So let's go over to our blog.js. And now for author, instead of string, is going to be schema types.objectid. Now, where does this schema types come from? Well, let's go back up here and we actually need to import this from Mongoose. And we also need to add a ref or a reference. So this is going to refer to our user model. This is going to allow us to quote unquote, join our data a bit later. So let's include the same thing here for our user under comments. So this is going to be a schema type of object ID. It's gonna reference the user model and it will be required as well for every comment. We'll save that. And lastly, let's go over to our index.js file. And at the top, we'll need to import our user model. And then let's create a new user. So we're gonna say user await user.create and we'll give it a name and an email. And then let's create a new article. So we're gonna say blog.create, we'll say awesome post three. And in the author field, instead of a string, this is going to be the user.id. So we're creating this user. And now we're gonna get this user's ID and pass it into this article. So let's open up our terminal and save our file. And now we see awesome post three. And notice in the user field, we just have our object ID. Let's go back into our Atlas dashboard as well. Let's refresh this. And we should see here at the bottom that we have our author with our object ID. And notice over here, a new collection called users. And we have our new user as well. So how do we get all of the info for our author along with the article? Well, we can use the populate mongoose method. Back in VS Code, let's find our article. So we're gonna say article is going to await blog.find1. We're gonna look for the title of awesome post three. And now we're going to populate and we're gonna specify which field we want to populate. That is the author field. So let's open up our terminal. We'll save our file. And now let me expand this. And now we can see we have our article and the author data is all populated within the article as well. And Mongoose actually uses the MongoDB dollar lookup method behind the scenes to get this data. And Mongoose middleware are functions that run before and or during the execution of asynchronous functions at the schema level. Let's look at an example of this. We're going to update the updated at date every time an article is saved or updated. And we're gonna add this into our blog.js model. So back in our blog.js file, after our schema, we're gonna say blog schema .pre, and then pass in save. So this is going to be before we save, and now we have a function, and this function is given a next method. So we're gonna say this dot updated at is going to equal date dot now, and then we're gonna call next to move on. Now back in our index.js file, we're going to find an article, we're gonna find it by ID. So I've grabbed one of the IDs from our articles. Then we're gonna say article.title is gonna equal updated title. Then we're gonna await the save and then console log the article. So let's open up our terminal. We're going to save our files. 
And now we've never set any updated at dates, but notice that we now have an updated at date. That was all done through the schema. Now besides pre, there's also a post mongoose middleware function. I think that our example here could use another schema for the comments. So try creating that schema and testing it and adding a few users and comments. Now there are many other great mongoose helper methods that are not covered here. So be sure to go check out the official documentation for references and more examples. And I'll include a link in the description. I think it's great that developers have many options for connecting and manipulating data in MongoDB. Whether you prefer Mongoose or the standard MongoDB drivers, in the end, it's all about the data and what is best for your application and your use case. I can see why Mongoose appeals to many developers, and I think I'll be using it a lot more in the future as well. If this video helped you out, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this.